Who's that? Ready when you are. Good. Fire! Hello, my fellow sunbreakers, and welcome to some sunbreaking. And today, we're gonna break the game. What are we gonna break the game with? Cats. The prophecy is true. Okay, maybe not so hyperbolic, but one thing is certainly true. Palicos in Sunbreak are absolutely ridiculously strong. There is five new super moves that you can put on any Palico that absolutely change your hunt in a very positive way. Each time any of the five go off is a really impactful moment that gives you a massive advantage that you better take advantage of because you're gonna find yourself having a much easier time of it. But when given the choice of five new super moves, the question you must ask yourself is one, what do they all actually do? And then two, which is the best? Which should I use? Why should I use it? I realize that's three questions, not two, but also, shut up. No, I'm sorry. Okay, so I want today then to bring you a lowdown guide and my tested recommendation of the best new Palico super move to use. But firstly, you might be asking yourself, super what now? After you beat the urgent Tetranadon in Sunbreak, which is very, very, very early on, you will get back to Elgado and see five different Palicos want to have a chat with you. Each of them will give you a request to go on on three hunts with a type of palico, one for each of the five types. Upon doing so, you will receive the ultimate attack for that type of palico. That said though, at uh, the uh, palico station, you can put any of the five moves on any of the five types of palicos. You don't actually have to use the specific type you needed to unlock it, so there's a lot of flexibility there. So, uh, let's actually go through them then, starting with the lottery box. This is really awesome. So essentially every now and then, and actual hard time wise, it's about once per minute, your Palico will pull out said lottery box, and from it he will use one of the universal Palico moves. Literally any one of these 15. Not the signature ability of a Palico, the level 1 and level 20, but any of the middle lot. This is really nice because a lot of them are very good and having what is essentially a double up on them is really nice. If you get an extra shock prison, if you get an extra summon endemic life for an extra wire bug, if you get an extra power drum to keep the uptime on that, there is more good ones than not so it's hard to lose with this lottery. But if it just did that, it would be average at best. Of course, we all know it's hidden secret. There is a chance and by chance, I mean it'll happen once every 10 minutes or so, that it actually becomes the Kittenator, a portable cat-launched massive stabbing device that will have monsters at your mercy. Literally, 300 damage plus a full length down, which of course lets you do many a combo and get many a free bit of health chunked off the monster. This cannot be understated how monumentally useful it is. With just two caveats. There is an internal cooldown on how often a monster can actually be, well, knocked down by the Kittenator, so you can't really stack them, as it were, and just chain downs. Secondly, well, they tend to miss a lot. Though fortunately, Capcom very much realized that may happen and that it may be exceedingly frustrating, so if you do have a missed Kittenator, the cooldown of it won't be triggered and your Palico will try and do it again almost straight away until it's actually landed. So that is very much nice. This can knock over nearly every monster in the game, like honestly 98% of them, and basically does a perfect job at giving you not only a breather, but a huge opportunity to make some serious headway at actually killing your prey. Really, 10 out of 10 on all fronts.
Yay. Yes, indeed. Next up, we have ourselves something a little bit more explosive. The Feline Fireworks. This is quite the big bomb. How it works is, while fighting, your Pelico will slowly build up this fireworks ability on your bar. Once it reaches the top, they will let you know that it is ready, and you can ask them to do it. They won't do it until you do. It takes about two three minutes of fighting on average to actually get this to happen, at least that I have found. So, what happens when you whistle them to use it is right directly underneath where you're stood, so you need to make sure that you are stood where you want this to happen. Your Pelico will pop out the ground near instantly, place down this big firework bomb, light it, a short delay will happen, and then in a massive area around it will explode for 350 damage. Which is nice, right? It's a bit more than the Kittenator, but the thing is, that's all it is, just damage. And if you thought missing the Kittenator and having to wait for a new one was annoying, well, in this instance, the monster very often and quite easily will just move away from the bomb that is now lit and committed and used, and you will get no benefit whatsoever. So it definitely has a lot of drawbacks and not a huge amount of advantages other than it is actually available fairly often. You can do near half of the charge instantly by using a felvine, and of course it does look very pretty. It's just a standard big boom and it is fun, but unless you're going all in on having your palicos kill the monster for you, I think there are very much appreciably better choices. Then we have ourselves the Best Palico ability, at least if the only category we're judging it on is the audio. I love it. This is really interesting. So, once it gets played, it will give your buddies a quite sizable boost. That lasts for around 35 seconds, and essentially what it does is power up all the other abilities and attacks and general existence that the Palico has by a little bit. How much is a little bit? Well, if we use uh, the fireworks as an example, we know it just did 350 damage, but under the effects of big enhancing bird of glory, it now does! Are you ready? 385 damage! Yeah! 35 more! Which is a 10% increase. Which, I should be fair, is actually really decent. Your Palicos and indeed your Pelamutes just becoming 10% more effective for that long is really good. And if you were using proper decked out fighter Palicos for maximum DPS on the monster, this is something you'd want because it would turn your Palicos, well, also, in to a monster. Even stuff like Health Horn healing 10% more, it affects everything that they do, so it really is an awesome amped steroid for your Pelico, and it's up a large amount of the time, and honestly, I am quite a fan of this. It's a lovely set it, forget it, your buddies are just better ability that really kinda works. Then we have a Meowsing Mist. This ability, and I don't know if it's just me, I, j I honestly, the Palicos do not like doing it. They refuse to do it. I've tested this multiple times, and it takes them so goddamn long to actually use the thing. Like six, seven minutes a pop, and I don't get why. However, maybe the why is that it's actually really good when it does happen. You know the various elemental blights that you can apply to a monster? Well, this rolls one at random and does so. So you can water blight, fire blight, thunder blight, frost blight, and have that effect on the monster for free. This works with a few skills like foray. I do have a full guide on all of the new skills available that I will hopefully remember to link down below. And indeed, do like this video if you enjoy this kind of investigatory content. Subscribe for more, all of that good stuff. Here here at your Sunbreak Hub. In any case, yeah, it's neat, right? If you get water, then you do a load more damage for a while. A Thunderblight can give you a stun, which is some extra uptime. It's a little bit RNG, but it can certainly have its moments. Incoming! However, 
still up against a guaranteed down from the kittenator and it nearly takes as long to happen. But it's still not the worst. I think it's just kind of solidly okay there in the middle. And if you get something like Frost to Blight, well, yeah, it makes the fight a bit easier for a while, but you're going to feeling sad that it wasn't one of the other four, which are all tangibly a lot more useful. In any case, that's that one. Finally then, we have ourselves the Healing Clover Bat from the Support Palico mission. This is ridiculously good. Your Palico then will put down the cage of bats, either hit it or sheaf and use it, and you will now have said bats following you. You'll have a new little bar at the top of your screen. Doing enough damage to the monster will fill up that bar. Once it reaches full, you will start for a long time getting massive amounts of healing from the bats. Like, so much healing you won't need to heal. Like, so much healing you can just be incredibly reckless and it won't really matter. So much healing that it feels a little little bit like it's too much healing. I really cannot stress how much healing and for how long these bats actually do. And you usually get about one set of bats every six, seven minutes or so, which feels about right because again, while you have them on, it's hard not to feel completely invincible and that's very, very cool. You'll get about a minute out of them. And as long as you keep damaging the monster, keep the maximum level three healing bar filled, you will just surge up every time you've not directly just taken damage as you don't heal while you're invincible, it would seem. This, I, I mean, yeah, it's just great. It really, really is. It's so good for feeling that security, for feeling like you can be extra aggressive, and with that comes the confidence to get more damage in, so technically speaking, in that respect, it is a damage increase. A very, very useful super move that everyone can get something out of because it's just purely potent. So that's the five of them then. The question of course remains, which is best? Well, for me, it comes down to a hard choice between two. The Kittenator slash Lottery Box and the Healing Clover Bat. And indeed, those are the two that you should have if you're running two Palicos in a solo hunt. But if you're in a group hunt and it can only bring one Palico, well, then you only really want one Kittenator because you don't want to overlap Kittenators, which means everyone else can take the bats. But then if you've got that many Palicos, you might want to have the Hero Song so they all do better. And you might want to have one Meowsing Mist because the Blights are nice if four of you can take advantage of a water blight and it gets kind of complicated. The bottom line though, if you're looking for a hard answer here, is the single most reliable, ironically consistent, once you know what it is, and hunt affecting in a positive way move is the lottery box and thus the kittenator. Every time it pulls out, there is a moment where you walk over to the kittenator, you get the monster hit, and you get that full down's worth of damage, and it just cascades throughout the hunt. The extra abilities are incredibly useful as the hunt goes by, and having used all of these for many, many hours of hunting, it is easy for me to see that I have got the most positive gains out of the lottery box, not just from the Kittenator, but from the extra useful moves that get pulled out than I have from the others. The Healing Clover Bat is an incredibly close second, and again, if you're running two Palico solo, those two are the way. The other three just have a little bit of a weakness that isn't really worth taking in just general normal hunting. If you're wanting maximum Palico damage, well then yes, the buff song is good, and perhaps a mine is too. If you're wanting to roll the dice and get that perfect blight at the perfect time, or maybe you're running foray, then you could go for the mist. But as a general rule, the lottery box is the way. And I know someone that would be very pleased about that. <laughs> I hope then, ladies and gentlemen, you found this useful, this investigation into our new ultimates, and I hope you are less confused than perhaps you were, or at least now confident in your choice of which one to go for. Like if you enjoyed this, subscribe for more, hit the bell for more sunbreaky goodness, consider supporting the future of this channel on Patreon down below, and until we meet again, a good boy. <laughs> Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye